Presenting this from for Cap. Um, okay. All right. Helping labs thrive. That's that's our motto here. Um, and quite honestly, this. Uh, you know, I'm not so much showing. Uh, you know, materials. Um, you know, this is just purely educational. This is this is something that you can really use in your own laboratory. Um, so we'll start off with the, the camera lens and the flash. Um, the most important um, tool here is is not so much your camera, but it's the lens and the flash. Um, you know, I think we all know that investing in in some of these fancy DSLRs can be a pretty Pretty pricey, especially if you're a small lab. But I guarantee you, if you if you invest in in the correct equipment now, um, you won't be switching out for something that you wish you would have gotten later on, which is what I did originally. Um, so don't make that mistake. Just go for go for the gold the first time. Get 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 the good equipment. You won't regret it. And you can use it for forever. Um, so the camera that I have is a Canon EOS Rebel T6i. It's um, the, the Rebel series is kind of um, more of an affordable line of Canon. Um, it doesn't make them cheaper or or worse. They're um, just a little bit more basic, I guess. Um, but this the T6i is one of the newer Rebels. It's 24 megapixel. Um, you know, it's a DSLR, which is a digital single lens reflex. Um, and uh, it, it's a great camera, and I use it outside the lab as well. Uh, here's a picture of the body of the camera here. And probably the most important thing I would say is the flash. Uh, I use the MT24 EX Twin Flash, uh, and having the Twin Flash is really, really important, whether you're doing model photography or intraoral photography. Um, this is the ticket. This is what what you need. And and I'm going through the Canon stuff because I don't have Nikon. But basically, if you if you are looking for something for a Nikon, you type in um, you know Nikon Macro Twin Flash. That's what the MT stands for. And those are those are great cameras and great flashes as well. And that's what the flash looks like. It just uh, goes into your your mount on the top. And the uh, the circle clips onto the front of your lens, and this is a stationary flash. It it remains um, on the side of your your lens, and you can rotate those up and down, and actually take the flashes off. Um, this is just really essential uh, in your in your kit. Um, next is the lens, and I'm using the Canon 100 millimeter macro lens. Um, it's a primary lens, so you can't zoom with it. It's not a zoom lens. It's, it's fixed, so um, you have to find that sweet spot and focus. And, uh, and this is one of the best macro lenses on the market. It's um, Canon has different stripes on their lenses. Uh, I think this is an L lens, so it's the red stripe, as you can see, and that means that it's uh, their highest quality of glass and all of that. Okay. So, first of all, we will talk about the camera settings. Um, I always use manual mode. Uh, a lot of people will change to program mode or, or aperture priority. Um, it's you, you're just uh, making things more difficult by doing that. Use manual mode. You can control everything. And, um, and you get a, a, a great result with that. Uh, for white balance, I use, uh, in the settings, you can go in there and change it to the flash. It's a little lightning bolt symbol. Um, for case photography, I'm not worried about white balance. I'm not taking a shade. I'm just simply taking a fancy photo um, to, to show people. So white balance is not super important, but the lightning bolt 
uh, flash for the white balance is uh, a, a good preset, so to speak. Uh, my shutter speed is 1 one twenty fifth of a second. And then my aperture is usually around f22. Um, and aperture and f-stops are the, the, the same thing. Uh, it's basically the, the opening um, that lets the light into your camera. Uh, the, the bigger the number, the smaller the opening, and the, the smaller the number, the bigger the opening. So um, this is where you control your depth of field. And I've seen a lot of people take beautiful photos and their, their f-stop or their aperture is a little off and the, the teeth, uh, let's say if you're taking a picture of your anterior teeth, um, the model will get sort of fuzzy as it uh, as you look back on the model. Um, by keeping this around f22, you, you'll get the whole model in a sharp focus, and that makes makes for a much nicer photo. Um, the ISO is a measurement of how, how sensitive the sensor is. Remember on f uh, old film cameras, you'll have like 400 speed or 800 speed. It's it's kind of the same thing. So um, with ISO 100, you're getting a, a really um, high quality image with not a lot of noise or, or graininess. Okay. So now we'll go to the flash settings. Um, these are really pretty you can really mess with these to get an effect that you want. Um, I wouldn't say that there's any uh, rule on, on where you put your flash. I mean, the more you play with it, the more you get used to your camera and, and the flash and, and the lens, all of that combined, you start playing with the settings and you'll, you'll find the exposure that you, that you like and that fits your style. Um, I always a manual between 1.1 and 1.8. One point one is a pretty strong flash, and so uh, I might use that for one application, and then I might change it to get more of a sort of a darker look, or what have you. But this is something that you need to play with, and it, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. You take a picture, and you can look at your viewfinder and see if that that works for you or not. Okay, the next is the lens. Um, again, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I use autofocus. A lot of people say, you know, you have to use manual focus, but I don't use a tripod, so uh, I like to hold my camera. That way I can freely move around the model and take different angles and, and see what works. Um, so autofocus works best for me. That way I can, uh, not worrying about so much. Um, if you're going to use a tripod, I know some people do and they've got really cool lighting systems, you know, uh, and, and mirrors and all of that stuff, then you might want to consider um, using a tripod and that way you can use the manual focus and kind of get that uh, sweet spot where you want it. All right, what not to use. <clears throat> this is my favorite part. So this is a Canon zoom lens. It's a great lens. It's great for taking pictures of nature or, um, you know, I'll use a zoom lens to take a picture of my daughter running across the, the yard with the dog or something like that, but um, just because it's a zoom doesn't mean that it's going to work for macro photography. You could might be able to get a decent photo out of it, but it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to drive you nuts because you're going to have to be farther away from the subject to get, um, to get the photo that you're looking for, and then you're going to lose the effects of your flash and, and all of that. And plus the, the clarity just won't be, it's not a macro lens, it's not, it's not used for that. So let's not use that. <clears throat> um, ring flash. I, know, I know every time I go to a show, whether it's the midwinter meeting or, or whatever, I always see um, plenty of booths uh, set up with, um, with people selling the ring flash. And the ring flash is fine for, for a lot of different things, but what happens is because you have that circular flash um, coming out, it, it you know, to get a, a really dramatic effect, you're looking for shadows and specular reflection. Specular reflection is the, the glare that you get. Um, and that shows off your contour and your texture and your shapes. And so if you use a, a ring flash, 
Um, and you, you might be able to get a, a fairly decent clinical photo, but I've never had any good luck with that. Um, I had a ring flash. I had a zoom lens. I did the best that I could several years ago um, with what I had, and I quickly realized that I needed to upgrade. So if you have a ring flash, that's cool. You can use it for a lot of other things, fashion photography or, or whatever. Um, but for dental uh, photography, then um, I would suggest not using it. Another thing, too, is if you receive pictures from doctors, um, I can spot a ring flash photo from a mile away because you get these big glares on the teeth. There's no shadows. They all run together, and um, everything just looks kind of blown out. <clears throat> and the iPhone or your, your smartphone. Um, every year these, these cameras get better and better. Um, I love my iPhone. Uh, I take a lot of pictures with it, but even with one of those goofy looking macro lenses, you're still not going to get, um, you know, you might get in close enough, but you're not going to get the, the effect from your flash. And realistically, um, you know, uh, megapixels just aren't quite enough, the resolution's not enough, and the sensor on the camera is not big enough. So, um, you know, your, your cell phone pictures is not going to look, um, you're not going to find the effect that you're looking for whatsoever. So I'll say no to that. So the accessories that I use is pretty easy. Tape, and I'll use some paper. And then just a black cloth. You can use a black t-shirt, um, a black tablecloth. Uh, the table that I'm sitting at right now now has a nice black tablecloth, so I'll use that. Um, but uh, with these accessories, I'll, I'll show you after the, the presentation is done. But basically, the, the printer paper is for diffusion, flash diffusion. Um, you can buy uh, you know hundred dollar diffusers on Amazon, and they work great, and they they look really cool, but um, it, I just found that a piece of paper work, printer paper. I know a lot of people will use um, like the wax cooking paper or baking paper, and uh, that gives kind of a cool effect. But basically, what this does is that instead of having that direct um, flash effect on the teeth, it, it makes things look a little harsh. This diffuses the flash, and it gives that nice satiny look. I'm sure some of you might have seen on Facebook or in magazines some of these. Um, photos that are just super satin and I think that there's a happy um, balance uh, a happy medium be between uh, too much satin and 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 too too clinical looking especially for um, uh, presentations or or trying to woo a doctor into sending you his work so we'll go over that a little bit later but this is all I use aside from the aside from the camera and the flash and the lens this is what I have readily available and it's very mobile. I can take it anywhere, and most everybody has a piece of printer paper if I need it. So editing. You can use Keynote. That's what I like to use. It's just what I'm used to. Uh, it comes pre-installed on uh, any Mac device, um, and it's, it's cool. You can actually sync it up with your iPhone and make tiny little changes on the road if you need to. I've never done that, but you know, it's possible. You can also use Google Slides, which is um, also a really popular one. I'm not as familiar with Google Slides. Um, I will be teaching myself as time goes on, but right now I'm pretty quick and efficient with Keynote. So the editing. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Um, I like this. I keep this in mind all the time just because, um, you know, you, you take a nice photo and then you put all of this font and reflection and graphics and lines and it, it gets to be too much and um, if you want people to appreciate your work for what it is you want your 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 restorations to be the uh, the sort of center of, of the photograph um, oftentimes you'll see a photo and it's small and it's of this I'm sure a great looking restoration but then all of a sudden in the background You'll see, um, you know, the, the, the font or the, the uh, typeset is, is bigger than the teeth. And I think that that really takes a lot away from what you're trying to uh, portray in your photos. 
So this is the uh, adjust, you know, adjustment in Keynote. You can actually edit your photos. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a bare minimum, but I want my photos to be good enough to where I just have to maybe adjust the exposure and the contrast. Contrast is is, is what I use the most, um, and I'll tell you why uh, in a few minutes. But you can do a lot of things right in uh, right in Keynote. And there's even a way you could crop in Keynote. We won't get into that because it's, it's a little little archaic, but it is possible. Um, what I'll do is at the end, I'll, I'll drag a photo into iPhoto and just make a quick crop um, the way I like to, to crop things. And then we'll uh, drag it back into Keynote and fix it. But exposure and contrast is, is really um, what you need most. Here's just a picture of my camera with the model that I have here next to me. Uh, I think with our uh, photography, there's a lot of artistic um, ability that needs to be put into it, but it's also very mechanical. It's not so different than what we do at the bench uh, as technicians. You need to have that sort of artistic um, eye, but you need to be mechanical and know how things work and know um, what to put where and how the mouth works and all these different things. So what I always tell people when they're taking photos, whether it's on the bench or in the mouth, um, you want to have your flash set up a specific way. And, um, and it, it works best when you use a little bit of uh, geometry. And it doesn't have to be exact, but by having your flashes pointed you know, at the direction of your, your subject um, to sort of meet the middle there, um, is a really good starting point. When you play with your flashes more, you can, you know, you can experiment. That's, you know, the fun in photography is wondering what would happen if I took one side of the flash and put it somewhere, and what kind of effect would I get? Um, I love doing that. When I take a, a photo of of a, of a model with some crowns on it, um, I, I'll take yeah, 50, 60, 70 photos. I'll just go crazy, and then you know you spend time going through those and finding the one that's going to work the best. But I'm constantly moving the flashes around. But for your straight ahead, um, more clinical, clean looking front on shot, um, this is a, a nice position to have the flashes. So here's the effect that you get um, with and without diffusers. Like I was talking about the printer paper before. So. Um, this is the same camera settings, the same flash uh, position. All I did was uh, tape some paper onto the front of my flashes. And you can see on the left, it's, uh, it's a fine photograph. It, it, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But those uh, specular reflections there are a little harsh and a little, little crude. They're not um, sexy, so to speak. But by throwing those diffusers on there, you get the nice, even, uh, reflection and it, it, it sort of mirrors um, the other side. It's nice and uniform. And these are completely unedited. I, I haven't done anything. They came straight off the card and went right into the presentation. So, um, you know, that that's a good photo. That's a photo that I'll that I'll use and I'll, I'll crop it later and adjust the saturation a little bit. Um, but yeah. So here's here's another one. Um, slightly different camera angles. I, I threw the put the, uh, the flashes closer to the crowns on each side um, and you can see a little bit more of the texture with the, the diffusers and I really like that photo too. Um, one thing I will say is by getting into macro photography, you know, I like to practice, you know, in the backyard with flowers and, you know, whatever, just to photograph something other than teeth to um, sort of hone my skills a little bit. Um, it really shows all the detail. So not only is it great to have uh, photography for lectures and presentations and Facebook and all that stuff, but if, um, if you really want to, uh, to up your game as a ceramist or as a technician, whether it's staining or layering or waxing even, um, my advice to you would be to have your camera ready. Um, and every time you're done with, it could be the ugliest anterior case in the world, but if you take a photo of it, 
and you look at it on your computer, you will start to see um, all your little tiny mistakes. And there's always going to be something that you're not happy with. I could pick this case apart for a half an hour and tell you everything I don't like about it. It's, it's not perfect. Um, but through photography, it's really up to my game a lot. So it's definitely um, it's, uh, beneficial in a lot of different ways. So here we're looking at the specular reflection there. I, I really like how balanced it is. Um, and you can see some nice texture in there. And you can see a little speck of gray where there's some dirt on my, on my lens, which I need to get that cleaned. But um, that's another thing. You'll start to see um, <clears throat> all the details, good, bad, and the ugly. OK. Let me go back to this other slide here. I wanted to point out the slide on the left without diffusers, you know, this, the flash is strong enough to where, all right, sorry about that. So as I was saying, the, the picture on the left, um, you know, the flash was strong enough. I was talking about the, the black isn't quite black enough to put on a black background. You'll see that square um, or rectangle of sort of a gray <coughs> that you see there. Um, and that's something that uh, the contrast will fix in editing. Um, the one on the right with the with the diffusers is looks like it's almost perfect uh, and the black will work but it, it won't and I'll, I'll show you how to my little trick of testing that um, in a little bit. So again yeah, the specular reflection looks good the texture looks good it really shows um, where your paracamata is and if it's properly done and if it's natural looking All right. So I always like to take some side photos, patient right, patient left, and um, again, it's just nice to uh, you can put all of these on one slide, or, or you know, you, you can have a lot of fun with these. Um, but I, I always like to get a good front photo and a good side photo from e from each side, just as uh, a starting point, and then. Um, I call this the dreaded zirconia photo, not not because of zirconia as a restoration, but zirconia as a photographable subject. Um, these are difficult to take photos of if it's if it's monolithic and it's not layered. Um, I, I I was really able to snag a pretty good photo of of this case here, um, but the reason that zirconia is so tough to photograph is because there's no light absorption. Um, it hits the surface and it bounces back at you. So what you're looking at in your hand looks really nice and, and um, has a lot of depth and translucency to it. And then you take a photo and by that by that flash bouncing off so harshly you, you lose that dramatic effect of the, the translucency. So I know there's a lot of different tricks to taking um, nice photos of, of mono monolithic zirconia um, with lighting and uh, and all of that um, but uh, you know unless you have a, a the time and, and a nice studio to set up it, it can be a little bit daunting and frustrating um, but by diffusing the the flash correctly I was able to get a pretty good photo of, of uh, this work which I was pretty happy with all right another good practice is if you ever get any um, any extracted teeth, this is a natural tooth given to me by my uh, good friend and uh, lecturing partner, Miles Cohn, up in Maine. Uh, I told him, I said, every time you extract a tooth, you must give it to me. That's the rule. And so people think it's creepy that I've got jars of extracted teeth, but they're great to study, and they're um, <clears throat> they're actually they're they're great to photograph because you get the effect of what a natural tooth looks like when it's photographed. So if you can get your restorations to have that that same texture and that same, uh, you know, the texture of the flash and the same uh, depth to it, then you know that you're you're on the right path. Um, so yeah, I would, I would encourage you to do that. And then also take photos of friends and family and, and all of that just to practice. Um, have fun with your photography. This is the same zirconia case. And basically what I did is I, I took one of those flashes off 
and I <clears throat> pointed the other one away and, and took that flash and I held it behind the crowns on the model and took a photograph and it, it took a few tries but then you get it just right you get that really cool glow and when you've layered something you'll get you'll be able to see all of your internal effects and um, you know crack lines if you add them and what have you and uh, it's always nice for that that wow effect and um, yeah, it's fun so you can put some cool fire and and uh, effects and stars and all of this stuff and um, you know this is something you can do for for a final slide um, this is a little over the top for me but it, it's fun to mess around with and see what you can what you can come up with <coughs> um, in keynote you know there's so many different fonts to use um, if you it, it, when developing your style um, of editing and putting together a nice photograph it's it's really important to um, believe it or not, choose the right font to use. Um, you know, handwriting Dakota is is old and it's been used. Don't use that. Don't use, you know, some of these old standard, um, you know, typesets because they, yeah, just, you know, find one that uh, that suits, suits you and, and suits your style. Uh, and you know what? If you want to use handwriting Dakota, go for it. <laughs> um, totally up to you. All right, thank you. And let's see. Uh, I'll say this now before we go back live to me. Um, our next webinar <coughs> is on July 12th at 11 o'clock, and it's on virtual model building. Um, let's see. So topics such as Im import methods, margin defining, implant setup, articulation, file management. Um, and all that will be used with three shape uh, and a lot of other things as well anything to do with model building all right so uh, actually now what i'll do is <clears throat> so my screen's live now right you can see the mouse moving around okay cool so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to open up a new uh keynote and uh, Let's see if we have anybody who's curious on how to throw something like this together. I'm going to do just a quick basic one um, in in my style, and uh, and you can <clears throat> you know take what I've done and, and expand. You know, use any of these backgrounds that you want. But, uh, I always go with the black one first. So we'll open that up and uh, just click on these and get rid of them. And what I'll do is I will go to over to document, and I will scroll down to slide size. This is the standard um, size. I like to use the widescreen preset, and you can customize this by putting in your own measurements. But this is just my go-to. It's the first thing that I do. So this is a nice black background. Um, before we get into that, I will go to. Let's see here. All right. Uh, for webinar, this is the photo. So I will drag this into photos. And then I'll double click it. And then I will go up to edit. Like so. Go down to rotate. Nope, oh, not rotate. Well, you could do rotate if you wanted to put it in upside down. That's always kind of cool, too. Uh, or sideways if you wanted to frame your photo. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, crop. Here we go. So I usually use Aperture or um, Lightroom to do all of this stuff in, but it's, it's you know, I'm not going to go through all of that. It's, it's just as easy to use this for basic adjustments. So when you start straightening this, I will use this grid to get, um, you know, get, the, get everything straight the same. Uh, distance here between the incisal edges and that and that uh, that line right below here and that looks good to me and then I will go down to the crop and I'll actually bring this up right below the incisal edge here actually I might rotate it a little bit more straighten it that's good enough 
and then you can drop the top down. And the reason I'm doing this, it's going on a black background anyway, but I'd rather have um, as much of the non, you know, the unuseful image taken out. And that just makes my editing a little bit easier later on. Click done. And then I'll simply drag this off onto my desktop. Here it is here. And I'll go back into Keynote. And I'll take this cropped image and drop it in there like this. And then it will show you when the, the image is uh, centered. Okay, and so that off-color background where the black isn't quite black enough in the photo, the way I check that is I'll, um, I'll take, uh, I'll go into screenshot mode, but I won't actually take a, a screenshot, which on a Mac is Command-Shift-4. Hold all those at the same time. Your cursor turns into this little target. And I'll click and drag over the image. And I don't know if you can see here, but if you look closely um, where the actual image is, it's it's not quite black enough. And and when you're done with your photo uh, and your editing, if this isn't taken care of, um, you might not notice it on social media so much. But if you were to do, throw it up on a on a big screen, it would stand out like a sore thumb. So I'm going to hit Escape to get out of that. And what I'll do is I'll click on the photo and go to go to format and then actually I don't even need to put this shortcut. Go up to adjust here, you can use this and your exposure and contrast that, that picture that I had up before. And I will carefully see if I can do this. It's very sensitive. I'll put the contrast up to one. Let's see. Sometimes it takes me a second. Get it. If you go, well, this this will show you the effect. I mean, you can go too too much uh, or too little, and you can really see uh, see how off it is there. But I can go up to plus one uh, or two. Well, for time's sake, I'll leave it at two. I usually fiddle with it until I can get it right at, at one. And what that does is that makes that black round, that background completely black. All right, so now I can position this wherever I want. Um, but again, to, to make it nice and clean and simple, um, I'll put it in the middle, maybe up a little bit to leave a little room for um, for some some fanciness. So if you wanted to insert a line, you could go over the line. It gives you this thing here. And then you could do something like a, an artificial reflection uh, right here. And then you can change the color of the line and the width of the line. And you can just bring it right up there. It looks kind of cool. And then you can click on the image and go to reflection. And you can get kind of a, eh, it's kind of cool looking. I do it sometimes. Um, and then you can just, you know, add whatever you want in here. Um, you might even make this image a little bit smaller, and then you could use your side photos. Um, yeah, from the patient left and patient right, you could put them on either side and make sort of a uh, collage. Uh, and that looks really cool. Um, so there's all sorts of things that you can do. Um, you know, you don't need to buy Photoshop. You don't need to buy Lightroom or... Um, I still use Aperture, but they don't make that anymore. You, know, you don't really need all that stuff. If you can dial in your camera just right, um, then you can get uh, you can get some some really cool cool effects. Um, a couple of no nos. If you do get Photoshop, um, there are, are things that some people do um, that I've seen, and you know what, to each his own, but. Uh, you will get called out for it on, on Facebook, especially um, if you use the, the, the clone or the uh, cut and paste where you can, you know, oh, I don't like that specular reflection here, but if I took the one from the other crown and pasted it and blended it in, then it looks so uniform and so perfect that it looks fake. And um, I guarantee you someone will see it. And uh, it's, it's funny how reputation exists 
on Facebook um, and some of these other social media places, but um, you'll get called out for it and it will follow you around for a while. Um, I've seen it happen to a few people. So, you know what? Perfect photographer, no one's a perfect technician. So the beauty of, of these photos is seeing the, um, the, the imperfections and the, the natural um, you know, curves and angles that you get. So no Photoshop. Don't do it. Say no to Photoshop. Um, however, if you needed to, you know, do something else, you know, if you use Photoshop to put together a presentation, then that's fine. But when it comes to actually changing your image to make it look better or um, more perfect, then I think uh, I don't know. Call it an ethical thing. I I I just don't think it's a good good thing. Just take a nice photo and, and show people what you have. Okay, so anyway, yeah, you could add text. You could do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, my best advice is to uh, just play around and, and see what you come up with. All right, let's get out of Keynote here. We'll bring myself back up in a second. Da, da, da. Am I on visually? Yeah, they can see me? Okay, cool. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too boring. Hopefully it was informative. Um, so I'll just show you my camera. Uh, it's my baby. I love it. Um, so what I bought was a, uh, gosh, what is it? A Win Winfotech from Germany. It's this bracket that goes underneath the camera, and you can take you know, that original um, circular bracket that comes with this flash, and you can take that off and mount these here so you can basically angle these all sorts of crazy ways to get cool lighting effects. Um, but for my standard photograph, like in that slide that I showed before, um, you know, I like to keep them right about here. Okay. And that gives me the, the correct angle. Um, as far as the pieces of paper for diffusers, um, one thing I didn't mention is for clinical photography, uh, such as shade taking, you really don't want to use diffusers. It, um, not only will it diffuse the teeth, it will diffuse the shade tab. Okay. And I think that um, to get a good shade photograph, don't use diffusers. Um, there's a lot of cool toys out on the market. Um, I actually just ordered the uh, Polarize from uh, BioEmulation, um, which is basically filters that go on your flashes and on your lens. And that takes all the specular reflection off um, of your of your subject. And so when you're doing a shade photo, you can use that only as a tool. Um, but your primary f photograph should be no diffusers, um, straight up, you know, clinical photograph. I think that works the best um, for me. So with the paper, <coughs> I will put two pieces of paper or tape on each side of the paper. And I will sort of tape it like so. Here. This. And then your hundred dollar Amazon uh, diffusers are now the price of a piece of paper and two strips of four strips of tape um, and this works really well so I won't take a photo because of the flash but um, basically what I'll do is I'll take this model and um, when I'm done with the case I'll pour up another model specifically for photographs uh, whether it's in white stone or they make some really cool uh, gray stones and even black stone you can get really get creative with um, how you want it to look but I'll always grind it at an angle and that angle is meant for propping it up on the table and it's at a slight angle towards me and it just makes um, taking the photograph that much easier and so without the tripod and, and the lights and all of that I can simply stand up for a second have it pointing at me click, take a photo, 
done. Super easy. And you can rotate, go around, turn the model upside down. You can do all sorts of um, all sorts of things. And then you can, you know, move your flashes way out here. Um, just experiment. You can get some really cool effects. Um, however, when it comes to you know showing a doctor your work, um, I would say keeping it pretty clean and, and basic is good. I don't think doctors, not all of them, are, are really interested in how good you are as a photographer. They want to see how good your work looks, and um, you know you always want it, your photograph to look the best, but um, don't try to make it look like something it's not. Uh, I would say stay straightforward um, when it comes to that. So anyway, that is it. I think I'll open it up for questions. Um, I hope that was interesting for, for all of you guys. Um, if there are any photographers who are awesome that are watching, please give me your feedback. Let me know if, if there's anything that you saw that maybe I could change. And if you're new to photography or you want to get into it, um, you know, ask me any questions. You can Facebook message me or email me. Give me a call here at CAP. Um, I'd be more than happy to, to help you out. But I've shared um, the basics of, of what I do as far as taking a photo and, and presenting it. Um, so, yeah, I'll open it up for questions. Oh, there it is, questions. All right. Okay. Let's scroll through here. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. I know we had a little bit of an audio situation, so I'm scrolling through those questions and comments. I will start with make this a little bigger. Okay. You mentioned uh, let's see, Israel Valar printer paper. How do you use it to make a diffuser? Oh, so yeah, like I just went through, just tape it on like this. They kind of flop around a little bit. Um, but I like to have them, you know, I'll set this up like that. I like to have them a little bit away, you know, sort of a, a gap um, there. It, it, it allows for the flash to travel a little ways before being diffused. Um, I've tried taping them right to the front of the diffuser. I've got those, or the right in front of the flash. I've got those cheap little plastic things that you snap on. They don't do anything. Don't even waste your five ninety nine, dollars um, Unless you have free points and you don't have anything else to buy with it. But they're a waste. Um, so, okay, moving your levels, slider left to right to increase the black bite from Glenn. Yep, so we kind of went over that using the contrast and sometimes even exposure can help with that. Um, once you get into more, uh, the, the heavier editing soft, software, um, like Aperture, I know they have a um, black level uh, and a white level. I think they have that in Keynote as well. So basically it takes all of the blacks in your photo and makes them darker or lighter. And that works, but a lot of this stuff is very, um, it's drastic. So you've got to be very minute adjustments. Um, and once you go too drastic, then it kind of shows up in the photo. And you, I know and people, other people know when, when that photo has been tampered with too much. It's just a little too, um, too fake. Let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see. Don't get Photoshop. Get Lightroom. Yeah. So if, with Photoshop and Lightroom, um, it's cloud-based now. So if you want Lightroom, then for ten bucks a month you get Photoshop. And if you want Photoshop, you're going to get Lightroom. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say don't get Photoshop. Get Photoshop. Uh, I, I'm learning Photoshop now, and it's another world for me, but um, I'm not using it for um, 
strictly dental photography. You know, I shortly realized that after spending time on and, and, and money <laughs> to put together this camera setup, um, I realized, wow, I've got this, this amazing camera and all I do with it is take pictures of teeth. And as you all know, I'm sure that on the weekends, if you have a weekend, sometimes you have to um, take your mind off the teeth a little bit. So I've been getting, you know, I, I bought a different lens for this and I've been getting into um, you know, some urban street photography and, and journalists. I'm not a journalist, but I, I, I getting, getting into that, I appreciate um, that side of things a lot. And so, uh, and it's funny, every time I take a photo of something that's not dental related and I have fun with it, I always, uh, I always find something that might, you know, a technique that might be useful in the lab as well. So, so yeah, Photoshop, not not Photoshop. You know, just just don't change your don't, don't change your restorations with Photoshop. Uh, okay, what is the name of the flash head bracket from Germany? Okay, it is uh, original flash bracket by Winfotech, and that's W I N P H O T E C, and that's in Germany. Um, I really lucked out. Go to eBay if you don't want to buy these things new. Um, I was really patient for a long time, and I ended up getting the bracket and the flash together for a really reasonable price. I found the um, uh, at a local place called Hunt Hunt's Photo. They had a used 100 millimeter macro, but literally the guy bought it and kept it for like a month and then brought it back. And so it was practically new. It still had the wrap, the original wrapping that came around it and everything. So um, and it. I bought it for several hundred dollars less. So don't feel like you have to buy all new stuff. Um, you know, and as far as your camera goes, um, megapixels aren't as important as you think. Um, what's really important is uh, the lens and the flash. Uh, my older camera, which I still have, is an older Rebel, and it was like 12 megapixels or something. Not much better than an iPhone, and I still got really cool pictures with that. So. Um, your flash and your, your lens are the most important. Um, why use so much paper? Can they be smaller? Yeah, I guess they could be smaller. Um, good question, Kennedy. I actually used to take two big pieces of printer paper, like one on each side, but they kept just getting in the way and there was too much floppiness. <laughs> so I cut them, cut them down and, you know, beet green and all that stuff too. So, um, find the effect that you like the best. Uh, if you like the effect with the smaller diffuser, then use the smaller diffuser. Um, try the wax paper for the, for baking. Try that and see what that looks like. Um, the options are endless. Just find what works for you and what presents your work um, the best way for, you know, for you. Okay, why 100 millimeter macro lens? Ah, good, good point. Uh, versus the 60 or the 85. Um, so I had a 60 before, and it was it was awesome. There is literally no difference between the two other than your focal length. Um, so what happened was, how did the story go? To keep it super short, I had the 60 millimeter macro, and I had a fixed twin flash. It was like an off-brand, and that was fine. But once I upgraded to this, the the bigger flash. I wanted to um, I wanted to have more leeway with where I put the the, the flash uh, heads, and so all, all it is is how far away from your subject it, uh, you are. So with the hundred millimeter, um, I could be a little bit farther away and get different lighting <laughs> options. So if you have a sixty or an eighty-five, I think for Canon it's sixty, sixty-eight or sixty, and then a hundred millimeter. Um, but those are fine, and really the only reason I get rid of that is, is because of the flash situation, and um, I did something stupid and I scratched the lens, <laughs> so I had to get a new one. Um, let's see. Right. Yep. Glenn, good good point for the Adobe. Yeah, they've got a lot of good good resources and YouTube. I mean, good grief, it's like you can learn anything on YouTube. Um, my the best way I've done everything is when I see a cool photo that's someone has has posted or shared, 
I will message them and annoy them until they tell me how they did it or um, how to approach getting that, that effect. What settings do you have on your camera for shade taking, uh, Christopher? Um, good question. So I really keep everything the same. Um, the, the settings that I currently have, I got from um, uh, uh, an amazing talent in um, uh, North Carolina, Skip Carpenter. I'm sure some of you know who he is, but I loved his his photographs were so organic and so they weren't so clinical that they were boring, but they weren't so diffused and um, and fake looking. Uh, and so he shared with me his settings. And so I, I changed my settings to that. And then, um, so I, I tweak them a little bit as I go, um, depending on the case. But then for clinical photography, like shade taking, I will simply just um, change the f-stop uh, a little bit to um, for that depth of field, and uh, that way I'm getting all of the clarity on the on the subject. You know, if it's a single central, I'm focusing on that. Um, you still don't want the blur in the background, but um, that's the only thing I change. Uh, and I will often, uh, like I said, stick these off. I state of the art diffusers here, and for doing shade photography, I will put them real close to the lens, kind of like this, and then I will, um, you know, adjust as necessary. Um, but that works well. But that's what I love about these settings is you don't really have to change much if I'm, if I'm going to do a shade. Okay. Which file format, excuse me, do you use JPEG or RAW? I do RAW. Um, let me change, turn this on. Yeah, it's on RAW. Um, it's a bigger file, but, you know, I can do more with it. Um, and I'd, I'd rather, I'd just rather have it, you know, in its purest form, I guess. <clears throat> okay. All right. Chris, you missed the beginning. That's okay. What aperture speed, f-stop, et cetera, did you use... For the picture that you took. So I'll turn my camera back on to remind me because I never memorize any of this stuff. Um, I have it all written down. So my f-stop is 22, my ISO is 100, and my shutter speed is 125. Um, and then, like I just mentioned, RAW, my flash setting, or excuse me, my white balance setting is on flash. Um, and that's it. Oh, and manual. I keep it on manual. That way I can, can change everything. Um, yep. So that's about it. Um, so the smaller the lens, you need the smaller the flash. This is referring to the to the question about um, lenses earlier. No, not necessarily. It was just um, I'm a little obsessive compulsive when it comes to things like this. And so I, I just wanted to, to upgrade to... Um, the best lens. <laughs> it, it wasn't necessary, but in a way, it was necessary. I'm investing in, in you know, in uh, um, you know the cases that I do, and in, in, in the future of uh, my job as a dental technician. So, um, for me personally, you can I, I could get away with some of the other um, uh, you know pieces that I had before. They they worked okay, but I wanted to have not the best, but <clears throat> I wanted my photos to stand up alongside anybody else's. That's all. Again, what, whatever works for you. Just stay away from the ring flash and no iPhone photos. Okay. I think that's it. If there are no other questions, then... Um, oh, one more question. I like the diffusers over the flash heads. I thought of getting... Yeah. Oh, that's fine. more of a statement. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Those those ones that snap over the flash are just just a waste. <clears throat> um, I literally have mine sitting in the bottom of a box in place. I don't even know why I kept them. Uh, but yeah, they don't they don't really do anything. Um, 
Yeah, and trimming the cast is, is good too. For, for me, if I'm going to take a photo, I, I don't have time really or the space to set up like this big elaborate setup. Some people do and that, that's great, but for me, I like to be very mobile. And so little things like trimming the, the model at an angle, um, they work perfectly. So, all right. I believe that is it. So, thanks for attending. I hope you got something out of it. I hope that, that helped you out um, a little bit. And uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me anytime. Cool. Have fun. Have a good rest of the week. Have a good lunch. I uh, will see you next time. Take care.